portion. Thy portion we shall never be shaken. Let us praise the Lord of our salvation. simultaneously.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, this day, how you bless us, how you keep us and sustain us. And Lord, right now, we ask that you help us as we take our giftedness, as we take those things in which you bless us with, and use them for the building of your kingdom, Lord. Lord, we pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. All right, our scripture reading today is from the book of Psalms. Uh, chapter 62, verses 5 through 8. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. <coughs> the word of God to live and to share. Amen. Thank you. Psalm 1846 says, The Lord lives and blessed be the rock, and exalted be the God of my salvation. It was hard for me to say that verse because I've sang it so many times in, in another way. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, rock of my salvation. Yeah, so we know that. But then in 1 Corinthians 2, 10, 4, it says, They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the same spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. And so... When we think about this, I can't think of a better word myself to describe God, unmovability, consistency, strength, and solidity or solidness as to think of God as our rock, something that's dependable that we can count on. And so when we hear these words, rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. And we, and we hear all these songs about rocks. Keep us mindful of what they've meant to Christians throughout the ages. Augusta's top lady wrote the words to that famous hymn, Rock of Ages. And he was caught up in a, in a sudden storm. And in this storm, as the wind and the rain came, he found himself finding refuge in the cleft of a rock. And he immediately thought of God and the way God protects us in the violence of storms within our lives as he wrote that wonderful hymn. And many times in the Old Testament, we hear time and time again, God is called rock. Rock was the strongest thing known. And it was a fitting image for God at that time because it was everywhere. And the consistency of God within a desert place of desert mountains built of rocks. What better image could they have as something solid to depend on as a rock? You see, during this time, Israel had been uprooted from their homes, their jobs, their farms. And Isaiah said to them, is there any God, or in Isaiah, God actually describes himself this way. Is there any God beside me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. And like I was saying, as, as Israel was going through this, or as God's people were going through this time, they've been uprooted from their homes, their jobs, their farms, their country, and even their temple. They were homeless refugees. Displaced people living at the mercy of their conquerors. They had lost everything they knew in worldly stability and in worldly security. And God sends Isaiah to tell them that God is their rock that they can depend. Isaiah 26, 4. Isaiah gives Israel the words from God. And he says, On, oh, trust in the Lord forever. For, the God, for in God the Lord, 
you have an everlasting rock. An everlasting rock. Today, too, we have good reason to need to understand God is also our everlasting rock. We live in a mobile society, an ever-changing world. And we live with the fallacy of traditional values that are no longer holding our society together. And I say fallacy because values are not the same for all people, yet God is the solid rock for everyone. And yet we depend upon values that we create for ourselves that oftentimes are at the cost of others. But yet when we lean upon God and what God has for us, God is our rock and will always be a stronghold for us to hold on to. I can't tell you how refreshing it is to be raised by a father who whenever times were hard always reminded me Francis what you've done is horrible or Francis what you're going through is traumatic or Francis what we're suffering from is beyond understanding but he always ended it by reminding me that I had a place to return. I had something that I could put my hope in. And let me tell you, it was much different than what the world teaches. It wasn't a bank account. It wasn't a degree. It wasn't a pride in a particular lifestyle. It wasn't allegiance to a flag. It wasn't a political understanding or ideology. The only place, the only place that was solid was the place of Christ Jesus. That was the only thing, no matter what we have done, no matter what we are going through, no matter what place we are in where we need peace, there is one God and one Lord and one who will love us forever and ever, who is the eternal and solid rock. Instead of being reminded of the despair of life, God's promise of salvation is the rock of hope to live by. And so as we look at everything that's going on in the world today, and, and I love the conversations that we're hearing online and in the news and everything where everybody's trying to find solutions to every problem. And none of them, none of them will solve anything. If we took all of them together, they would not solve the problems of the world because they are paper. They're wet paper. And in the flash of a pan, they're gone. But yet, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. So the psalmist says, in the midst of life's struggles, these words, my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress, and I will never be shaken. We need reminders that there's hope within the world and in the midst of everything that we hear. And I have to say, honestly, it's so refreshing when you can get away a little bit and not have to listen to it and just spend some time out. God is present, a stronghold, our rock, and God alone is in control of the world. 
even though it seems to be in chaos. He is the Alpha and Omega for us. In God's eternity, he is here from our beginnings to our ends. Always was and always will be. There's a scripture in Habakkuk that makes a lot of sense to me. It says, God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He makes me tread upon the heights. Now, Lois and I have spent a lot of time hiking in the mountains, believe it or not, through the years. If, if you look at some of our pictures from 45 years of marriage, you'll see many of them in which we're on hikes. And one thing that I had recognized from the very beginning is I love getting up into the top areas of the mountain where you start to see mountain sheep and goats. And it's interesting when I hear this and I think about the deer in the upper highlands and everything, unless it's fairly flat, they're always standing on rocks. And what amazes me is how a deer can stand right on the edge of a rock without any fear, knowing that that drop is vertically straight down a thousand or more feet. And they're standing there as though they're in joy. And when I hear the scripture, I think, you know, that's what it's like in life, man. It's like we're standing on the edge of an endless cabin or chasm, and we're standing here right on the edge. And I know with my wife, my focus, I look down, I'll probably fall into it. But I don't have to worry because I'm standing on a rock that's solid in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. God goes before us. God walks beside us. God stands be behind us. God envelops us, surrounds us. God is our foothold. God is our rock, our stability on the path. God is our salvation. I want to end with something here, and, and I want to tell you, after 45 years, I feel like I could get away with this, but I did ask permission. This comes out of Lois' journal. Yeah, I know, that's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, I see some head shaking, but she gave me permission to share this. This is from June 17, 2008, and I want you to hear the words she wrote. Help me remember this day, hiking in Colorado, as I look across the majesty of the red and gray granite, Rocky Mountains that I love, and as I looked at the river full of smooth skipping rocks, in which I rejoice, and as I looked at the beauty of the lodgepole and the ponderosa pines. You are always God's own poetry to my soul. This evening, I see the great sky where God is lighting God's lamp, and I am reminded. I may not see you many more times, but Rocky Mountains, I shall be alive when you are gone. And river, I shall be alive when you cease to run. And stars, I will be alive when you have fallen. Because for God alone, my soul awaits in silence. My hope is from him. He alone is the rock and my salvation, my fortress, and I will not be shaken. <clears throat> For our God is our rock. He is our mighty rock. And in him, we too have everlasting life. Let's pray. God, you are my everlasting rock and salvation. You are our everlasting rock and salvation. Right now, as we cling to you, teach us to follow you in this world 
so that we may point others to you who is forever the everlasting rock of our salvation. We give you thanks and praise in Christ Jesus' name. Please stand and join me in singing our